Hey guys, so I've got here a uh, DS, original DS, not a DS Lite, that I uh, was working on a while back, tried converting it to a macro, but this thing doesn't work at all, and when I plug things into it, uh, bad stuff happens. Let me show you what's going on here. So if I take my multimeter, put it in continuity mode, horrible there we go you can see touch these together goes down to about 10 I think my probes are wearing out that's nice but whatever um, there shouldn't be continuity on these two battery terminals not really sure what's going on there but uh, if I plug a battery into it the battery well explodes and if I plug my power supply into it, it uh, just complains and shuts down. So let's get this thing torn apart and let's see what's going on. So I can't remember at all if this motherboard is actually converted over or if it's literally just the bottom half of a DS. Con Why is this not working? Sorry, yeah, I can't remember if this is just the bottom half of the DS or if it was actually an attempt at a macro. Uh, unfortunately, I've got to fix this, and also, uh, unfortunately, some other moron's been at this way before I, you know, way before tonight. In this case, thankfully, that other moron was me, so I can probably figure out what the hell happened. But I've been putting this off for a while because I, frankly, just didn't care. Uh, everything looks right on this side. It does actually have a fuse in it. It's definitely not the right one. I wonder if that's why it's shorting. It shouldn't be, but I don't know. I'm not too concerned. It's missing a screw. Oh, that screw post is cracked. That one's cracked. Man. That's okay. Let's take these buttons out before I lose things. Oh, I'm missing springs. There should be springs on these. Explains why they're so mushy. Okay. So, good news, bad news. Um, good news is that this board looks pretty clean. I don't see any issues, which I guess is also the bad news. Because I have no idea why this doesn't boot. But that's okay. Also, I never apparently tried converting this over to uh, to be a macro. There should be a resistor soldered somewhere. I don't recall where. I'll have to pull up my cheat sheet here. Sorry, this is going to be a wonderful video, isn't it? Whatever, I'll set that aside because I've got here a parts console. I kind of figured I would run into this issue, so I just bought another DS. Uh, I got this thing for a whopping $1.68, I think. I don't know. Either way, I mean, everything works except for the top screen, which is probably just this ribbon cable here, but I don't really care enough to fix that. Hinge is obviously busted on this. Um, so I'll just pull the motherboard and we'll use this one instead. Well, no, what are you eating? Don't eat that. 
Sorry. <laughs> uh, well, that was a wonderful noise. I left my uh, parts drawer open and there was some heat shrink tubing poking out. My cat was munching on it. So, I want to make a macro out of an original DS instead of DS Lite, despite the fact that I have plenty of DS Lite consoles laying around that I can convert to macros, uh, literally on my desk even, but that's not the point. I like the original DS consoles for a couple different reasons here. First, these consoles use a transflective screen. So they are backlit, yes, they're not frontlit. I don't care what your cousin told you in 2005. They're backlit. Um, they're just kind of shitty backlit compared to modern screens. Uh, but yeah, they're transflective, so they do work out in direct sunlight. And um, one of the brightness op well, the only other brightness option in the DS is you can turn the backlight off entirely. I believe there are some DS models that I guess shipped with DS light brightness options so you can um, adjust the brightness through four different levels instead of just uh, on and off but this is not one of those. I don't know the specific details on that one. Okay. Plus, there's another thing, another trick I've got up my sleeve for this one. We'll get to that in a bit. Okay. I forgot a screw. There's a small cross screw. I did already have a screwdriver in the cart slot. And my cat's being a butthead. Probably because I yelled at him for trying to eat my heat shrink. Okay. No idea what that is. It's kind of gross. I have to clean that up. Or most likely not. I also want to use this screen, I think, instead of this one. This one has less scratches on it. Okay, so I don't need anything else from this one. Look at that, the screw post cracked as I was unscrewing it. See, I don't know what it is with these old DS consoles. I think Nintendo shipped these things with like a bad batch of plastic or something. So they're just brittle as all heck. I don't know what's up with that. Um, my blue one here seems to have that same issue with all the broken screw posts but can't really do much about it I don't have I have more consoles at this point than I do intact shells okay so before we do anything else we need to convert this over to a macro and get it booting on uh, without that top screen attached so to do that we need to solder I believe it is a 330 ohm resistor and where does it go? Oh, it goes up here. So this one did already have that soldered. 
Um, yeah, that's a 330 ohm resistor. I'm just going to pull the resistor off this one rather, rather than waste a new part. Because I don't know why this stupid thing shorted. And I don't feel like taking the time to troubleshoot it. I'll just save it for parts. If I recall correctly, this thing never actually worked, so I don't know. Okay, let's get some tweezers. This is probably just an 0805 resistor. I'm not sure the specific size, but it's pretty big as far as surface mount goes. And it is a 330 ohm resistor. All right. Apparently not on my game tonight. It's not the screen I want to use. Whatever, it'll work with this. Oh, here it is. So let's test it out, I guess. Okay. Let's go in there for good. So on a DS console, or excuse me, a DS Lite console, uh, as long as you have the system set to boot on the bottom screen before disconnecting the top screen, as long as you have, and if you set it to auto boot, as long as you have a Game Boy Advance cart in the system, you don't actually even have to solder that resistor. Uh, it will not boot into DS mode though. Okay, let's try this out. And it seems to be working. Yep, there we go. So that is all I needed to do. That was pretty easy. Okay. That was a complete, total, utter disaster. So. What I have here is yet a third DS. Um, when I tried cutting into that plastic, it instead of actually cutting, it basically turned into mashed potatoes. Literally any time I brought the cutting tool near it. And so it just constantly jammed up the tool, um, overheated the plastic, burned, and just melted in general. Did not turn out very well. So, I have here a third DS. Uh, I just did the exact same thing I did on the first one. Snipped off the rest of the hinge with uh, flush cutters and then sanded it down so to get rid of any of the sharp spots. I haven't finished this and I quite frankly probably never will, but it's better than just leaving chunks of hinge. This is an aftermarket DS shell and such. It's not brittle. I don't know what the fuck that's about. Um, unfortunately, I did gut a perfectly working DS, but I took this apart gently and I can just put it back together when I get more parts in. This thing is brand new and it was already cracked. So, God, these shells are so freaking awful. Anyway, I've got enough parts to build another one. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I am going to convert this one over, actually, to USB Type-C charging. So to do that, I don't remember how I soldered this last time. But, uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm thinking, though, I want to use this for that.
perhaps even zoom in. And last time I just globbed a bunch of flux on there and dragged the solder ball across, but let's see if I can do each one individually. You only need... I'm definitely going to need a solder ball. We only need uh, four of these six pins here. because the other two aren't connected. The other two should be the um, the current sense lines, but they aren't hooked up on this adapter. And I think this is going much better than last time. And the whole purpose of this uh, out of focus, I swear it's in focus in person, USB Type-C port is because I don't have, ooh, that's hot, an extra, I don't actually have a uh, DSFAT charger. I know it's the same connector as a GBA SP, which is why I can use this adapter at all, but I charge my non-modified GBA SPs in a dock, not just a bare charging plug. So even though it's the same connector, DS consoles do not fit in docks meant for GBA SPs. All right. It's going to all come together soon. I promise. Just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a cotton swab. And I desoldered the port. Uh, I just used a solder sucker on the two big anchors right here. And then I uh, dragged a big old solder ball across these while gently lifting the port, and that seemed to work fine. So let me flatten these out, because there's a copious amount of solder on these contacts still. And we should... Jesus, I still can't do this. We should put something in these holes so that it's not just solder. But to be honest, mine's been fine, so I don't think we need to. My uh, GBA SP, that is. But, eh, screw it. Let's get some wire. It's not optimal, but it'll do. I'm going to get some uh, 26 gauge Kynar here. Way more than I need, but I need something to hang on to while I'm doing this. So my intention with this is to provide a little bit more uh, mechanical structure. It probably is not necessary, but can't hurt, right? Rather than just solder. And then I'll just use flush cutters on this when I'm done. Come on. There we 
볼게요. 아. In case you're wondering, because the uh, original DS uses the same physical connector as the uh, Game Boy Advance SP, it does actually support um, Game Boy Advance SP headphone dongles. So technically, the Nintendo DS has two headphone ports. You know, just in, just in case you want to know. Oh. I'm actually going to solder that to this first. I'm going to do the same thing here, except going the other way this time. And for those wondering, this right here isn't a mod. That's just a uh, fix for a fuck up. Um, what happened was when I took this console apart originally, the uh, screw just stripped out because I was using the wrong driver. I tried drilling it out and I totally fucked up and ended up drilling a hole through the board. Well, through the copper layer on this side of the board, not completely through. And uh, these four wires here are just me fixing the traces that I messed up. Luckily, they're pretty low profile. Everything worked out. Okay. I think we're finally, finally getting there. I'm going to take a few minutes and clean up my mess, let the camera cool down, and then uh, I'll be back in just a sec. Thanks for sticking with me so far. Right, so thankfully there is plenty of room in the bottom half of the shell. Uh, once you snip out this support here and this, this round support and the square support, uh, which is what I've done here, I snip those out. The speaker fits nicely in here and I did actually test it with the motherboard this time. It sits completely flush. Yeah, yeah. And I went ahead and drilled out six holes here. Um, I had planned on drilling out 12 holes, but I didn't really feel like switching out the drill bit. So I just staggered them and drilled six instead. That's how you can tell. That, that's how my night is going. <laughs> okay. And uh, I did go ahead and place down some sticky double-sided tape. This is that 300 LSE or whatever the hell it is. SLE, LSE. I don't know. It's really sticky 3M stuff. I like it. A little bit on the pricey side. But it seems that all the best tapes are okay. And I just had it. Of course. Now it's gone. Uh, the reason for the tape is because I had... Christ, are you kidding me? One moment, please. Don't worry, I found it. It was stuck to my motherboard. I have this little square of um, like speaker cloth material. It's black, it's slightly translucent. I guess it's kind of hard to tell, but it actually worked out because it's just about the size of the holes that I drilled. So if I stick that down there over the uh, adhesive that I just laid down. It's not going anywhere, and when you flip it over it looks... I don't know, you, you don't see the speaker, I think it looks a little bit better. And then we can stick that in there, but to be honest, I'm actually just going to end up putting a big piece of sticky tape on the back of this thing. Let's see what I have. This red VHB stuff. This is also good stuff.
stick that to the back of that. And then when I'm ready, I'll just slam that down on the back of the motherboard. And we're good to go. I'll put the scissors away too. Okay. So now let's go ahead and get the uh, actual wires soldered up so I can get ready to stick it down. It's probably going to end up like halfway, like right about there ish. Like, I don't know that this whole thing is going to be used, probably just half of it, but that's okay. Oh, shoot, the soldering iron's not on. So if we look at how this lines up, you can see this uh, Wi-Fi card is only like half over my speaker grill. But I think it'll all work out. So yeah, that's going to end up going probably about there. Okay. I wonder if I can hold that in place. The big ass magnet. Yep. There we go. Good enough. Right, all that, finally to the main course. Just had to get this thing ready to actually build. So the reason I wanted to use a fat in particular is because the DS fat, the original DS fat is the only DS model to do this, but what it does is it sends the color signals for both LCDs to both LCDs, and then each LCD just has a different uh, clock pulse. So what that means is if you connect up a, um, well actually it doesn't matter, you can connect up a, a anything, like you know, a capture card or something, to either connector here, the top or the bottom and you can capture both of the uh, signals for the LCDs. So what that means is I can, of course, I think I put a, uh, yeah, I did. I need to access this DCLK2 pad right here underneath my tape. That is the dot clock, two, and then right by the connector, P6. So this one right here, the topmost via is the dot clock for the bottom screen. So long story short, if I uh, cut the trace here and then connect it up to that pin right there, uh, the bottom screen will then show the data for the top screen. So if I install a switch, we can swap between the two. But what we need to do is cut this trace. I hope it's this trace. Pretty sure it's this trace. So here's what we want to do. I need more wire. I think I'll use red because that's what I have plenty of. And I think I'll get some hot glue or something and stick that down. I think I already said that. No matter. I'll say it again. And we're going to put the switch right by the USB-C port. Let me actually 
get us now I'll get a switch in a second one two get the red right let me get this so it might actually be worthwhile to make a PCB for this I'm not sure yet probably not but maybe I guess it depends on the switch itself Trying to clear some space so I can bring y'all in a little bit closer. And forgive me, this is going to be super tight. Oh, jeez. So I have a ton of switches here. Set this aside. One of these would be perfectly fine, but I think I don't want to have to find spots now. So I was leaning towards one of these. What's in here? I don't know, that feels pretty thick. Those are push buttons. You want a toggle switch. Single pull, double throw. No. Yeah. SPDT. One of these would also work just fine, but that's, I think that's a little bit big. These are what I use on my uh, cart readers. More push buttons, more absurdly large, whatever. Let's just use this and be done with it. This way, I can do what I was thinking and put it on the charge port. That way, I don't have to make any more case mods. So the plan for this switch is to put it literally on top of this. And if I were so inclined, I'm going to snip off these little nubs here. There we go. I were so inclined, I think I could just solder this switch straight to the port. The only problem with that is these... Focus, you fuck. Uh, the three terminals are uh, going to end up sticking out. So instead, I'm going to use some of my extra LSE tape here. And we'll use this both to hold it down and as uh, insulation against the switch itself, or the charge port, excuse me. Because we probably don't want to connect either of the dot clocks to ground. It's probably a bad thing. 
This is why I was thinking a PCB might come in handy. This is a switch this small is, uh, I don't know, it's a little bit difficult to handle. And obviously we don't want it sticking out too much, if at all. Boom. So this top one needs to be the common. Now that I got both of those soldered, I am going to pause and take a break. I'm going to do a little bit of wire management and, uh, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to do some cable management and let the camera cool down just a sec. Right, so we're in the home stretch. Very nearly done. Just got one more wire. I did some uh, cable management here. Literally, all I did was take some hot glue and uh, one spot right there, one spot right there, one spot right there. That's it. This way, I don't have to deal with the wires moving around on me, etc., etc. But we do have one more wire. And I actually need to lift this up to get to it. Probably should tin that. But I think that's going to work out just fine. Okay. I have no idea how long this wire needs to be, so that's why I haven't cut it yet. But it needs to come up, down, round to that. Where are my flush cutters? There they are. So, decently long. Nothing terrible. Actually, I could have run this under the cart slot, even. But, oh well. Too little, too late. Just needs to connect up here. And that should be it. Probably shouldn't have turned the hot glue gun off just yet, but oh well. Let's put this thing together and uh, see how it works. Or how it doesn't work. Hopefully the former. So one more benefit of getting yet another DS is that this is the cleanest screen yet. Not that it makes a huge difference, because it's not that much cleaner. But good enough, I say. I'm a little bit worried about the solder on the connector itself. Hopefully that still seats fine. Felt a little bit off, but... Make sure you got your uh, LED light pipe in there. My phone is warning me that the battery is low, so I've got to finish this up pretty soon, one way or the other. But it's okay, we're in the home stretch here.
Noise, noise, noise. Oh, we want shoulder buttons, huh? Ooh, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. Where is, there it is. Ah, oh, I forgot a part. Let me stop now. Only got one screw in, that's okay. There's no slider on the volume. We can put a long one there. Does a different screw there. I'm gonna do the short one because I'm pretty sure that's what goes there. And that's not black. We're all done. Oh, that is gross. I have another one that's less gross. And if all goes well, it's going to boot first try with no issues. What do you know? It's working. Even have sound. And it is very late in the year. In fact, it's also very late in the day. Birthday as is. We will shut down. And let's test out charging, huh? Oh yeah. USB type C charging. Let's flip that around. Works both orientations. I am completely okay with that. And one more test. Rather I thought I had a game here somewhere. Guess not. No, there it is. Just kidding. Let's try it out. So obviously, this is not the right game for this. Um, 
assuming this works, I haven't actually tried it yet, but the fact that my bottom screen is working, I think it's going to work. Um, this, I suppose, would be good for some games where you can play pretty much on one screen, but every now and then you need the second screen for something. So, right now I'm in Pokemon Pearl. Obviously my bottom screen works. If I flip this switch here, should switch over to the top screen. And indeed it did, but something's wrong. And no, that's not just the camera. I can barely see that. Bottom screen works fine. Top screen is, is a bit off. I mean, it's usable, but it's terrible. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that or what, but this is, either way, this is still super cool. Let's restart it. Maybe it just needs to be started on that. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not right at all. My blacks are green. I messed, some, I messed something up. But well, there you go. I think that's pretty cool. You know, maybe maybe your homebrew for whatever reason only works on the top screen instead of the bottom screen. But hell, I'd call that a success even though even with that green. Let's try something real quick. Just for shits and giggles. I already know how it's going to work, but... Um, I'm going to set this to the top screen. Oops. Okay, yes. Now, if we put a GBA game in here, which I'm pretty sure... Oh, I don't actually have one handy. Well, sh Shoot. Oh, there it is. Haha! Have an easy flash. Boot this up. Boot straight to the top screen. Of course, my backlight's off, but if we flip that over, you can't see shit because there's no backlight. But the screen is on. Ta da! I don't know. I just thought that was neat. And no, I don't need the tweezers to flip that. I've just been using the tweezers because I had the tweezers in my hand. But I think that came out pretty nice. Obviously it needs some improvement because I don't know why that screen is uh, so green. But that's how it looks. If you focus, there we go. Obviously, the hot glue looks terrible, but whatever. I guess it's more of a proof concept. I'll make another one soon. I gotta order some more shells, though. I'm particularly happy with how that came out. Anyway, questions, comments, hit me up, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys.